Shalom, hello guys. Welcome back to Jerusalem. We are again uh, next to the Jaffa Gate. Yesterday we walked uh, the walls of Jerusalem. So if you missed that tour, I highly recommend uh, for you to see it. But today we're gonna go uh, for another uh, tour. We will go to the Hinnon Valley. So basically, uh, where we are now, this is the entrance to the old city and as you can see we are going down so we're going into this direction and this is where the Hinnon Valley will start so it's uh, a new place maybe for you there's gonna be a lot of things on the way uh, for you to see right, right now it's uh, it may be a little bit loud uh, because uh, of the traffic but uh, we will also go to more quiet places in a moment so what we're gonna do now is we need to pass this road and go down because that's gonna be our first place that we will visit and this is the so-called Sultan's Pool so it's uh, an interesting place uh, it was a reservoir of water for a long time uh, for the city of Jerusalem and uh, became very important uh, because it, it was a big source of water and as you know water is very important in uh, the Middle East and the Near East uh, and you need to have access to it otherwise you basically die so sorry that it's uh, a little bit noisy here but soon it should get better you can see here we're next to the Tower of David and um, now we're gonna cross this road over here so the Hinnon Valley is one of the three main valleys from the ancient times you had the Kidron Valley you had the Hinnon Valley and the Tiropeon Valley Valley so uh, I did a tour of the Kidron Valley and this is how you have to sometimes pass the road in Jerusalem <laughs> so, you can see the traffic it's quite hectic here you can see so now again you can see the, the Jaffa Gate, the walls this is where we walked yesterday on the walls and now it will be much nicer because we will enter a more quiet place so this is like a park now it's uh, it has been transformed into a big park but uh, it, uh, as I told you before, it used to be a huge reservoir of water over here, a pool of water where the water was gathered. And I actually have a 3D model of Jerusalem from the times of uh, the, uh, the second temple. So I will show you this, uh, uh, this uh, model as I render the video so that you know where in the ancient time this pool would be located and how it would look so we have like a 
a nice fountain, fountain here of water it's uh it's not that cold actually so because today is very warm it's about 30 degrees even more maybe and uh, it's warm <laughs> believe me so and we are actually going to one of the hottest places in Jerusalem because we're going down to the valley and in the valleys it is very very hot so this is a nice really nice park now there are actually different events organized in here uh, so it's a nice place to visit you know if you want to sometimes go have a quiet place in Jerusalem this would certainly be the spot to go this is very very uh, peaceful here and you can relax you can read a book uh, read the Bible it's a very very nice place to visit so the Tower of David over there the walls in that direction uh, you have the Western Wall so behind this uh, behind this wall uh, so I'll, I'll try to give you those pointers as we go so that you know where we are so a nice fountain here Fountain decoration. And it's nice here because the water uh, feels great <laughs> when it's that warm. Okay. So once again, see it from different angles. Okay, guys. So uh, this park is actually called the Teddy Park. So if you Check it out on Google, uh, you can come here. And here is the visitor center for the so-called um, artist colony. So you have a lot of artists here that sell their works, their uh, art. I don't know if it's open right now. And actually, I haven't uh, traveled through this place, so... I don't know if, <laughs> where we're gonna end up uh, eventually, but uh, we'll try, see what happens. So, it's a gate here, but it's open, so perhaps we can go and check it out. So, you can see uh, some of the art over here. And, uh, there's different shops over here, you see? So, it's a nice place, you know, if you're looking for something unique in Jerusalem, there's workshops over here. Uh, you can see the different things you can buy, you can purchase, and perhaps somebody can do something special for you. So, it's really, really, unique stuff over here if you're not looking for something generic and something very unique this is certainly the place to go so um, I am not a big buyer like I usually don't buy um, things when I travel uh, but my wife <laughs> does so uh, she always likes to buy things uh, when we travel. I try to always uh, keep myself light, uh, especially when I travel, um, and not equip myself with additional stuff. But you know, if somebody likes it, it's fine. And. Uh, so here you see uh, a 
another place. This is actually part of this reservoir I was talking to you, uh, you about, the Sultan's Pool. So we have uh, artificial grass, I think, here. Uh, I don't think it's real. But uh, yeah. Yeah, it's not real. Oh, looks nice. I mean, the trees are real. <laughs> so again, another place where you can just come and relax. So it's very nice here. I really, really like it here. You know, the birds are singing. Can you hear them? Sit on the bench here with me and just relax a little bit right hey guys so let's continue so we're gonna go lower and lower into the depths of jerusalem because today we're uh, gonna go through the hinnon valley so now you will actually see the the Sultan's pool proper, you know. They made it like an arena here. And there's as I told you there's different uh, concerts organized here uh, in this spot now. So this is not active anymore. But uh, this is where water through the aqueducts was transported to Jerusalem. So you can see the surrounding here. Uh, and uh, this is gonna be the spot of the Sultan's pool. Uh, in the ancient um, times uh, people believed that uh, this is the serpent's pool of which uh, Josephus writes about uh, in his descriptions of Jerusalem. So uh, it just changed the name to Sultan's pool. Now it's called Sultan's pool. So, see it here, some of the ancient stones here, and it's like a big hall, you know, basically. So it's a big hall next to the old city. And uh, now more water here. can see the original stones of Jerusalem from which most of the buildings are built the limestone the Kurkar stone So you 
can see chairs that are set up and it's like a scene over here serves people for concerts and events that are organized here so you see the name Sultan's Pool over there and uh, this is where you enter so once again Okay, so we're actually gonna go over there to the other side. More artificial ground grass here. There's some people. So uh, the guys that work here were wondering what I was doing here so I just told him that we are crossing so he allowed us to just go this way which is good because we can see the, the pool from the other side there's gonna be a good view from up there so you'll have a perspective of how big this place is so again walking up warm today <laughs> okay so here's another view on the Sultan's pool and upstairs you have the uh, basically the Armenian quarter so you have the walls over here and uh, you see a flag over there that's uh, that's the Armenian quarter over there so Next, we're gonna go to the Hinnon Valley. Basically, we are already in the Hinnon Valley, but it's gonna be more stuff as we go. Once again, this is uh, we're leaving now the area of the Sultan's Pool. Again, this is another place you can just sit in the shade, relax, have benches here, you know, with the Lion of Judah symbol on it. So have only a good place to sit let's hope this gate is open <laughs> should be but it doesn't look like it is Okay guys, so uh, once again to give you an idea, uh, we came out from there, and this is where the Sultan's pool was, uh, behind this wall over there, uh, behind those tree, this tree, and this is basically now the Hinnon Valley, and you can see how steep it starts to go here. Uh, this is where uh, the western hill ends uh, and this is one of the main valleys of Jerusalem so the Hinnon Valley is quite visible today um, you can see it quite well and we're gonna go down there so still a lot of journey ahead of us but uh, it's not also a place that you see people going. So uh, I hope you like this, that we are discovering new places in Jerusalem. So 
you see the direction here uh, this is Mount Scopus over there basically well Mount Scopus is actually behind this uh, this wall here this hill over here so Mount Scopus and then that's part of Mount of Olives of course so So we're going deeper and deeper, <laughs> lower and lower, go as low as possible. Here it is, the valley, Hinnon Valley of Jerusalem. Now, uh, this valley, of course, has very dark history mm, to it, because this is the valley where, when the Israelites departed from God, uh, they started worshiping false gods and it got very very bad uh, to a point when the israelites were starting to sacrifice their own children their own sons and daughters to uh, a foreign god pagan god molech and it was a horrible thing against which uh, the prophet jeremiah spoke about and only in the times of the king Josiah, uh, the, uh, the ceremonies ended and he cleared out all the false temples. He cleared out all the pagan worship centers, uh, got rid of all the priests and cleaned basically the Hinnon Valley. But because so hideous things were happening in this area, uh, sometime uh, this place uh, in Greek um, was called Gehenna, which is like a transliteration of the name, the Gehon Valley. Uh, and uh, Gehenna uh, became uh, became uh, a name also for basically hell because this place was basically hell on earth uh, because uh, children were sacrificed here uh, it was uh, also a dump site uh, so people would throw out their trash uh, here um, and get rid of the waste uh, so it was a very dark place very dirty place uh, uh, the worst kind of people assembled here and they started worshipping false gods uh, so it's a very sad story fortunately eventually it got cleaned by Josiah um, but today as you can see it's a beautiful place you know there's uh, trees that are planted you have birds that are singing it's a very very uh, peaceful place and you wouldn't suspect that so horrible things happened here so uh, that's basically the story of this of this valley so when you read about the Hinnon Valley in your Bibles uh, you now can see how it looks you can imagine and experience it so have an idea because those hills didn't change you know and the, uh, the valley didn't move it didn't uh, so uh, the uh, the Tiropeon valley did uh, change and it did disappear uh, basically you had uh, the Kidron valley you have the Kidron valley on one side you have the 
the Hinnon Valley on the other side. This is the Hinnon Valley. And uh, in the middle you had the Tiropeon Valley, but because of all the construction, mm, different changes from different time periods, uh, the, the Tiropeon Valley basically dis disappeared and is not visible today. So, mm, because it went basically through the center of the old city. So, uh, you can't see it today, but this valley is still here and the mountains are still here. So, we're actually walking on the place, very historical place, you know. So, you have big trees planted here now. And a tree is a miracle in the Middle East. You know, if you step to the shade, it's so much nicer, you know. Uh, it's such a joy. And you would just uh, rest during the hot days under a tree that gave you shade. And so that's why trees are excellent. And it's excellent to plant trees. Um, but uh, it's an interesting story about the trees because, uh, you know, in Israel you have even a whole day uh, which remembers the trees. Uh, to be shvat it's called. And uh, it's not a, a holiday to worship the trees, but it's uh, a holiday uh, which comes a little bit from the Bible because uh, in the Bible it, it is uh, said to treat uh, the plants in a good way and remember about uh, uh, even the, 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 the nature in the land of Israel because it's, it's basically God's land so it's important to treat it in the correct way so for example farmers were supposed to uh, give rest to the to the land and not uh, and not plant things every year but to give like the so-called Shabbat uh, year of rest to the, to the land and God said if you will do that I will bless you uh, during this uh, six years that you will plant that the seventh year you will have so much that you will not have to work so that was the principle but anyways uh, coming back to the trees you know during the Ottoman era uh, there was a special tax that was put by the Ottoman Empire on trees if you had the trees if you had a tree on in your yard on your land you had to pay a special tax to the Ottoman uh, authorities and because of this a lot of people started cutting down the trees and because of this the land becomes became so barren and empty and basically it looked horrible uh, when when they got rid of the, all the trees and only after israel uh, got the land back uh, they started uh, growing trees on a massive scale because they understood how important trees are in this climate and uh, you can actually in Israel when you're gonna be in Israel you can actually plant a tree if you like there's special organizations that allow you to do this and you can have your tree in Israel so it's really neat because they really value uh, the trees and because of this you know the land now flourishes uh, and it's not empty anymore have many many uh, trees that, that were planted you can see how many trees basically all of this was not here you didn't have trees at all here uh, and now you have plenty of them and different kinds of trees look at this tree for example it's so big so look how steep is we are how, how deep we are in the valley Nobody walks here because it's very very hot There's one guy going over here, but basically I'm alone here and in, in the Hinnon Valley so From both sides you have a hill and you see this this valley is I think wider much wider than the Kidron Valley If you compare the videos I did on the Kidron Valley uh, You will see it's much much uh, steeper uh, I mean not steeper but uh, narrower much much narrower 
so here are some nice uh, big really big olive trees you can see are planted here so let's go down closer to it almost fell there <laughs> okay so you can see even a, an art under the tree so you can see the olives on this tree they're not ready yet they're green and you know uh, olives basically uh, whether it's a green olive or a black olive or a red olive it all comes from the same tree it's not like you have special trees for green olives and then you have a tree for uh, black olives or red olives it's the same olive but on a different stage of its life so the most uh, mm, uh, mature olives are the black ones and the yellow, uh, the green ones are the, the less the least mature so I did not know that for a long time actually uh, <laughs> but it's true it's, it's the same tree So you can see the rock scarp over there upon which you have a road and a fence made out of stone so a wall made out of stone over there is here <laughs> so we are gonna now go to another crossing point over there and we gonna eventually end up where the Hinnon Valley meets the Kidron Valley but look at this bridge wow let's go <laughs> we're gonna definitely cross this bridge you can see it that's like cool so you go here and you can cross this bridge the only question is you know uh, that if I cross this bridge I'm gonna end up on the other side and then I won't be able to go even deeper so maybe we'll go back after after we cross it so we'll see how we feel it because it's really really warm now so now we are in a wild territory it's we're really away from the tourists from everybody See Still construction happening here Vajayona that we it's already open 
Oh, look at this. There's water. Oh. So nice. Let's see if it's cold. Look at this bridge. This is a new thing, as you can probably understand uh, from the construction that is still happening here. So this is very new. Look at this. Quite nice, huh? There's some uh, formation. So. I hope you're not afraid of fights. I'm not, but... And it looks solid, you know. Look at this. It's uh, quite solid. But it's so neat that you can cross the, the Hinnom Valley from here. You know, this is where we were. We came from that direction. So we're gonna go down there because there are some ancient to tombs in uh, over there so and uh, and uh, what I wanted to say is that actually we won't be able to come here because it's closed this is where they they actually have like a farm going on there so and look over there there is uh, water that's coming out so uh, we'll go close to this waterfall, so I think we're gonna walk like that Go over there and then go down uh, To the bottom of the Kidron Valley, so This is west uh, I mean, this is the old city where you have over here and so called the Western Hill uh, and this over down here is the Hinnon Valley. So it's actually a little bouncy on this bridge. <laughs> so it feels kind of bouncy. <laughs> oh man, that's very high. Look at this. Okay guys, so we're going down and uh, over there you see a guy with a donkey walking, I think it's a donkey or it's a little horse, uh, well maybe he will be there still when we're gonna go there, so we'll see, but basically what you have here is over there at the end of this road you have the meeting point where the Kidron Valley meets uh, the Hinnon Valley so you have both valleys and this is where it goes up so in that direction if it would go this road up you would end up next to the Jaffa Gate People running on the bridge and it's shaky <laughs> so, over there you have a Arab neighborhood which you can see why it's Arab because it has so many floors uh, uh, in their culture when you marry you basically don't leave the house uh, you just build up so that's why you have multi-layer houses. Uh, this is how how they do it. But oh, I'm so glad we came here because we can see all of this. 
uh, and this is very fresh so you won't find this um, anywhere else basically unless somebody came here recently see they want to develop this place and create like a park some sorts so this is gonna be like a village or something you have military people over there uh, or no they're just workers but uh, it's gonna be like a village or something you know recreation because oh there you go do you see the donkey the guy with the donkey so it's like it's gonna be like a biblical village or something over here so I don't think it's open yet uh, but you can see it so in the in uh, the future it's maybe a nice place to visit so over here now you can see now the the Mount of Olives and the big tower on top of it is the uh, Church of Ascension so uh, we can already see see the Mount of Olives from here so we're starting to see the end of the hill of the western hill on top of it you have the old city of Jerusalem and the end of Hinnon Valley and the beginning of the Kidron Valley. So this is where it curves like that. You know? So Okay, so we are here, across the bridge, so here you can see the bridge from the other side. Over there you have the King David Hotel on top of it and the YMCA uh, tower. Nice here in the shade. I want to see the donkey, <laughs> but the guy just went into the village. Maybe. So we have signs for the bridge over here. See the construction is still going on here. So. Okay. We are in the middle of the <laughs> construction place but they allowed us to pass so that's nice. There's some music going on here. Here's the bridge we passed and uh, so it's gonna be like a path here 
you know, above this village over here that they're building. So nice. You have to be careful now. This is where I wanted to come actually to show you this because those are some ancient tombs over here from biblical times. So once again this spectacular bridge over here and some of the really old tombs okay guys so we're very close now uh, to the ancient tombs uh, unfortunately this place is very dirty you can see the trash over here and uh, this place is actually locked so those are some of the most ancient tombs in Jerusalem actually uh, uh, there are from even first temple period some of them and then later in the second temple period they also were used so you have like uh, places over here you walk here where you can, you can see them and uh, this is the perspective on the in on volley here so see I gotta be careful here because it's uh, not very safe to do it actually like I do it but here here you have one of the tombs which is uh, quite well preserved you can actually see uh, the burial place exactly where it is over there and in Byzantine times uh, actually hermits lived in those tombs so uh, quite an interesting place to live uh, I think it was a, a way of punishment being in solitude places so but uh, what this place is also is the place of Academa, which uh, is known where uh, the field uh, that the priests purchased this place and they used the money uh, from the purchase of this field to uh, pay off Judas so I have a special episode about this mm, I think I will play it now for you to to see this material because I think it's uh, still relevant and since we are here you can understand exactly where we are and why this place is considered to be one of the mm, most let's say uh, tragic places in Jerusalem uh, we talked about the child sacrifice during the biblical times during first temple times and then uh, the whole story of Judas and the priests of buying this place, uh, this field, calling it Academia. So here's the material. We all know who Judas was. Judas Iscariot was a disciple and one of the original 12 apostles of Jesus Christ. According to all four canonical gospels, Judas betrayed Jesus to the Sanhedrin in the Garden of Gethsemane by kissing him and addressing him as rabbi to reveal his identity in the darkness to the crowd who had come to arrest him. His name is often used synonymously with betrayal or treason. However, today I would like to share with you 
something very disturbing that is connected to the character of Judas and more specifically to the way he died and how it affected the land of Israel. There are two accounts about the death of Judas. First is in Matthew 27 verses 3 to 10 and the second one is in Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verses 18 and 19. In Matthew 27 we read that Judas hanged himself, while Luke records that Judas, falling headlong, burst open in the middle and all his entrails gashed out. So how did Judas die? Well, it's possible that both accounts are true. On the first day of Passover, which is after the first night of Passover, the priests at the temple had to perform a special Passover sacrifice. But wait a minute, did I say that the Passover day follows the Passover night? How is that even possible? Well, in the Jewish system, a new day begins at sundown and not sunrise. All the biblical holidays begin at sundown. And so, it is possible to have a day after night in the Jewish chronology. I mentioned that because sometimes the chronology of the biblical account is questioned, but if we follow the Jewish or to be even more accurate the biblical understanding of time, then everything makes sense. But let's return to Judas. As we know, he committed a suicide after his betrayal of Yeshua. However, if there was a dead body within the Jerusalem walls, according to the Jewish law, the priest could not proceed with the Passover sacrifice. So to deal with that problem, you would have to take the dead body and throw it over the city walls into the valley of Hinnom. Once this is done, the sacrifice can be performed. And so, when Judas plea to return the money he received for betraying Jesus was rejected by the priest, he went and hanged himself. His dead body would then need to be thrown out from the city walls into the valley of Hinnom. The impact of the hit would cause his entrails to gush out. And so, the understanding of the Jewish customs help us to explain how Judas died. First, he hanged himself and then was thrown from the city walls into the valley of Hinnom. But that's not all. There is another controversy concerning the purchase of the field where Judas was buried. In the account of Matthew, we read that it was the priests who bought the field while Luke writes that it was Judas who purchased it. So who was it? According to the Jewish law, the money gained from a work that resulted in a spilling of blood could not be put into the temple treasury. This is why Judas' money was rejected by the priests, as Matthew records. Why? Because this money was used to bring Yeshua to his death on the cross. And so, this money had to be returned to the donor. Therefore, in this situation, the priest purchased the field with the money belonging to Judas. They could not return the money to Judas since he was already dead. And so again, Understanding the Jewish law can help us understand that biblical authors do not contradict themselves. But I still did not explain what is so disturbing about Judas' death. In the Gospel of Matthew, we also read a very mysterious words. In Matthew 27, 9, we read that the death of Judas fulfilled the prophecy given by Jeremiah. No specific verse from Jeremiah is given. And so, how are we to interpret that? Many biblical commentators say this is just a mistake done by the author and he really meant the prophet Isaiah or Zechariah and not Jeremiah because he does not mention anything specific about Judah's betrayal. But is that true? Well, the answer may be found in Jeremiah chapter 19. There was a section in Jerusalem called Tophet, which is a point 
where the Hinnon Valley and the Kidron Valley meet. This was a very dark place, where in the Old Testament times people used to practice human sacrifice. Because of this evil practice, God, through the mouth of Jeremiah, foretells a judgment. In Jeremiah chapter 19 verses 11 to 15 we read, And shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Even so will I break this people in this city, as one breaketh a potter's vessel, that cannot be made whole again, and they shall bury them in Tophet, till there be no place to bury. Thus will I do unto this place, saith the Lord, and to the inhabitants thereof, and even make this city as Tophet. And the houses of Jerusalem and the houses of the kings of Judah shall be defiled as the place of Tophet, because of all the houses upon whose roofs they have burned incense unto all the host of heaven, and have poured out drink offerings unto other gods. Then came Jeremiah from Tophet, whither the Lord had sent him to prophesy. And he stood in the court of the Lord's house and said to all the people, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring upon this city and upon all her towns all the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have hardened their necks, that they might not hear my words. And so, according to this prophecy in Jeremiah, God announces that the whole Jerusalem will become like the despised place of Tophet, where rebellious Jewish people were committing human sacrifices. Tophet became a synonym for Gehenna, Gen Hinnom, Valley of Hinnom, which is compared by biblical authors to hell on earth. Just like in hell, humans will burn in the lake of fire, so in Tophet, people were burned in the sacrifice to false gods. So how was this prophecy of Jeremiah fulfilled? It is possible that the prophecy of Jerusalem doom was fulfilled in AD 70 when Romans destroyed Jerusalem. How? Well, after the destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans, there were so many corpses that there simply was no place to bury the dead bodies. Josephus claims that 1.1 million people were killed during the siege, of which a majority were Jewish. So according to Matthew, when this field in Tophet was purchased, it announced the coming judgment of Jeremiah. The place was from that moment known as Akeldema, which means field of blood from Aramaic. The early church father Papias of Herapolis recorded in his expositions of the sayings of the Lord that when Judas killed entrails went into the ground, the place started to stank so horribly that even in Papias' own time, a century later, people still could not pass the site without holding their breath. We are not sure if this is true or just an exaggeration, but Tophet, the center of the Valley of Hinnom, was certainly a dark place. Child sacrifice and other Tophets contemporary with the Bible accounts that 700 to 600 BC of the reign of Ahaz and Manasseh have been established, such as the bones of children sacrificed at the Tophet to the goddess Tanit in the Phoenician Carthage. Many scholars have concluded that the sacrifices recorded in the Hebrew Bible, such as Jeremiah's comment that the worshippers of Baal had filled this place with the blood of the innocent, is literal. No archaeological evidence such as mass children graves have been found. However, it has been suggested that such a find may be compromised by the heavy population history of the Jerusalem area compared to the Tophets found in Tunisia. We must also remember that the site would also have been disturbed by the actions of Josiah, who defiled Tophet, 
which is the valley of the children of Hinnon, that no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire of Molech. Okay guys, so once again, thank you so much for joining me today. This is where we end our tour for today. We went down to the Hinnon Valley. I hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, I encourage you to like the video, subscribe to the channel, let me know what you think about this episode, uh, what should I uh, maybe include in my next episode. Um, and if you think that my work is valuable, I um, ask you to consider uh, supporting the channel. This really helps and I'm really, really grateful for everybody who is supporting the channel because basically this allows me to do what I do. I have some means to travel to do things so if you think this is valuable uh, you can support me through patreon i will leave a link uh, in the description of this video so you can just click it and then see uh, the different options of supporting the channel so thank you very much thank you for watching for being with me today may god bless you have a good day shalom